The Cincinnati Bearcats seem a lock for their first NCAA tournament appearance since 1977. Even with a sterling 22-4 record, though, they continue to pound their opponents and impress the selection committee until they get the nod. The Cats stepped into the national spotlight three weeks ago at number 24 and have lit their lamp brighter ever since. After a huggin'less win over Marquette and a big road victory in Birmingham, UC is ranked the 14th best team in America. But tonight, Cincinnati winds down its regular season with a huge Southern-style challenge. The Cats haven't won in Memphis since Ed Badger and Jelly Jones brought home the victory in 1981. This season, though, the Tiger faithful have doubled their numbers in a sparkling new palace known as the Tomb of Doom. This hostile environment of 20,000-plus will be the sixth man behind All-American candidate Anne Furry Hardaway. Hardaway can wreak havoc any number of ways and will loom as a nemesis tonight. From the Pyramid in Memphis, Tennessee, it's the Tigers and Bearcats coming up next. Nineteen XIX Sports presents University of Cincinnati Bearcat Basketball, sponsored by Greater Cincinnati's own Performance Automotive Network. By Miller High Life, by that man of Miller. And by Provident Bank. The 14th ranked Cincinnati Bearcats have journeyed south to the brand new pyramid on the banks of the mighty Mississippi. Tonight, a great Midwest Conference clash with the Memphis State Tigers. This is the final hurdle before the tournament. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Pyramid in Memphis. I'm Tim Bray, along with Derek Dickey. Tom Kelly is in our studio in Cincinnati. You know, Derek, tonight, the Bearcats have a lot of goals, and they could have a lot of goals met tonight with the win here at Memphis. And one of those big goals is a co-conference championship. And as you take a look at the standings, eight and two is the DePaul Blue Demons. And the Bearcats are seven and two. And Derek, all they need is a win. Well, they need a win in order to secure a co-championship, but that was indeed one of the goals that Bob Huggins set for his team to be champion of the Great Midwest its first year in existence. And they are on the way to fulfilling a number of those goals. The seeds are the ball and Cincinnati for next week's conference tournament. And Memphis State has a lot riding on this, a lot of pressure on Memphis State tonight. Well, indeed it is. There's a possibility Cincinnati could play Memphis State again in the Great Midwest tournament, but Memphis State still has to be concerned about this game tonight. They have to come out ready to play and absolutely come away with a victory. They are jammed to the rafters here in this new facility. And I'll tell you what, it even started last night, the intimidation factor here in Memphis. Oh, no question about it. We were greeted at the airport by a number of fans, as you can see, with the Tomb of Doom symbol arriving before we did. And they were waiting for Coach Huggins, and they are still waiting for him to come out on the floor right now. Memphis State is led by Anthony Hardaway. This guy can do it all. He is probably the best newcomer in the country in my estimation. Well, there's no question about it. This man is probably the closest thing you'll see to Magic Johnson because of his versatility and what he does. First in steals, assists, scoring, block shot, just about anything you ask of him. He's six foot eight inches tall and he can play guard or forward. Just a tremendous all around talent. All right, it's Memphis State and the Cincinnati Bearcats and the starting lineups are coming up next. Cincinnati and Memphis State here at the Pyramid tonight. This is a facility that uh, could hold 200 million of gallons of water, Derek, if you could put it in. And there are 22,000 fans in here. This is the largest crowd that the Bearcats will uh, play before all season long, but it's the 14th time that the Bearcats have played before 10,000 or more. This is a very impressive building, Tim, to say the least. It is indeed a pyramid, a glass and, and metal and concrete structure like nothing I've ever seen. But the fact that the Bearcats are playing this time for the first time in front of 20,000 fans, it could play a little bit of a, a psychological disadvantage. But at the same time, when I was a player, it was something that always got me motivated and pumped up. This is senior night here at the Pyramid for Memphis State, the final home regular season game. The seniors are being honored, as such as Tony Madlock and Ernest Smith. They also have uh, Russell Young. There are five seniors total. 
Memphis State is 18 and 8 overall. They are 5 and 4 in the GMC. But here at home, they are 12 and 3, and they have wins over Arkansas when they were fifth ranked in the country, and also Missouri when they were ranked 12. This is a totally different team than we saw in Cincinnati uh, last month. But uh, the Memphis State Tigers are doing just a tremendous job of finally gelling and hopefully taking that bit of consistency into the conference tournament and also into the NCAA or NIT tournament. Tonight's it's the 41st basketball meeting between the Tigers and the Bearcats. And Memphis State holds a 21-19 advantage in the series. Bearcats won 13 of the last, first 18, including the first six in a row. Memphis State has won 18 of the last 25, including 10 years in a row. And in order for the Bearcats to take home that prize tonight, they have to break the jinx, the 10-year jinx. Well, what they have to do, Tim, I think is just come out ready to play. They have to, instead of in the past four or five years that I've been associated with the program, let Memphis State get off to an early start. What the Bearcats need to do is come out right away. If they're going to initiate the press, do what's necessary to get consistency, get some turnovers created, rebound the basketball, and then go on and try to put this game away early. Let's take the fans back to the Shoemaker Center. First meeting of the year, 75-66. The Bearcats beat the Tigers. That was on January the 18th. Herb Jones scored 20 and grabbed nine rebounds in that game. And the thing that I remember was the fine inside play of Corey Blunt. Corey, oh, go ahead, Tim. 18 boards in that ball game. That's a career high. Well, in order for Corey to be effective, he has to be assertive at the beginning of the basketball game, just as Herb Jones. We're going to need his presence. But also from the outside, the Bearcats, have, when they have been successful, have shot the ball well from the outside. But to have a Corey Blunt, who is a defensive intimidator with the ability to block shots and also the ability to go after the basketball, he is going to have to step up his level of play and come out again and do that tonight. Memphis State has turned this thing around here in this great city and we talk about all the things that that Memphis is about and, and I think it was tarnished somewhat when they were on probation but Larry Finch who a third of his life has been associated with uh, this particular university has brought it back and I think the graduation more than anything else. Well Larry has also brought respect back to the university as well as harmony within the city of Memphis because he has the inside track if you will for the recruiting of high school athletes out of the city of Memphis, Tennessee, and he just does a tremendous job with keeping open that relationship with the families, the community, the business community, as well as the entire state of Memphis, the people of the state of Tennessee, I'm sorry, following Larry Finch and his great new program. Here's the starting lineups now at the Paramount in Memphis. The other forward is 6'5", junior from Long Beach, California, number 33, Terry Nelson. At center is 6'10", junior from Monrovia, California, number 45, Corey Blunt. At a guard, 6'3", senior from Flint, Michigan, number 23, Anthony Buford. At the other guard is 6'1", junior from Kenosha, Wisconsin, number 31, Nick Van Axel. And the head coach of the Bearcats, Bob Huggins. Now starting for the Memphis State Tigers. At a forward, 6'9", freshman from White's Creek High in Nashville. Number 50, David Vaughn. The other forward, a 6'7", junior from Treadwell High in Memphis. Number 25, Anthony Hardaway. At center, 6'7", junior from East High in Memphis. Number 55, Anthony Douglas. At a guard, 6'1", graduate student from Melrose High in Memphis. Number 20, Tony Madlock. And at the other guard, a 6'5", junior from East High in Memphis, number 35, Billy Smith. And the head coach of the Tigers, Larry Finch. So the 23rd win could be here tonight in Memphis. 
Welcome back to the Pyramid in Memphis, Tennessee, right on the banks of the Mississippi. Tonight, it's the Tigers and the Bearcats, and here are your light beer Miller game notes, as you see has not won in Memphis in the last 11 years. That certainly has to uh, be changed tonight, and this is a very difficult place to play in. Memphis State is 12-3 and three at home, and their three losses by a total of six points. One of their losses to Temple, and uh, they really almost gave that ball game away here. And, uh, and that is a big one as well. Derek Dickey, Tim Bray here at the Pyramid. And Derek, keys you see in tonight's game. Well, Cincinnati out-rebounded Memphis State in that first basketball game, 44-35, to which was their largest deficit of the season. And they also got to the foul line 48 times. And in order for Cincinnati to be successful, once again, get the ball inside to their big people established early and then later rely on that outside shot. Ron Zecker throws it up, and we're underway. It'll be Jones and Nelson, Blunt, Buford, and Van Exel for the Bearcats as they run offensively for the first time in the ballgame. First shot, and that is Buford, and it's long. Out of bounds to the Bearcats. Anthony Buford rushed that shot just a little bit with a defender in front of him. All he's trying to do is get the Bearcats on the board early, but you need to show a little more patience. Bearcats running the set from the out of bounds on the baseline. That's Buford. Memphis State in a man to man coming out off the inbounds. That's Jones at the top of the key. Memphis State's trying to apply pressure to Cincinnati to get them to go out a little bit further on the basketball court in terms of picking up their dribble and initiating their offense. Ten on the shot clock. First possession of the ball game. That's Van Axel for three. Blount with the offensive board. It's blocked away. David Vaughn with the block. Nice rejection by David Vaughn. Corey Blunt went up a little tentative with that shot. Double team, steal, and Blunt hits it. Van Axel doesn't have the numbers. Here's Buford in the lane. A blocking foul as he went to the lane. And it's on Smith. First foul of the game. Going to the basket is what Cincinnati needs to do. Here you see Corey Blunt getting his shot rejected because he's going up with a soft layup instead of being aggressive with a dunk shot. Had he gone in with a little more authority, he might have been able to get off an easy basket. And the first two points of the ball game. Herb Jones, nice move inside, giving a nice head fake to the bigger shot blockers underneath. Blunt trying to run the break against the zone and the press. Vaughn one one with Buford. Here's Smith. That's applying pressure out on their floor, just like Memphis State is doing, trying to make Memphis State pick up their dribble a little bit further away from the basket. Second possession of the game for the Tigers. Cross court to Hardaway. He touches it inside, whistle, and it's going to go against the Tigers and David Vaughn. Offensive foul, but there was good defensive position that time by Terry Nelson trying to fight around David Vaughn just to maintain and establish inside. Larry Finch still holds five records when he played here. Madlock applying the pressure to Van Exel. Really going to be important for Memphis State to take care of the basketball. They committed 31 personal fouls in that first meeting and also had a season low on his six assists and shot one of 11 from three-point range. Herb Jones tied up. Possession arrow goes to Memphis State. Put the ball on the floor, Derek, and you've got to keep the ball up. Well, no question about it. Herb Jones is six foot four, and when he brings the ball down around his waist or around his ankles, that makes him now about a, a four foot tall player, and if you don't get much accomplished at that level. First points of the game for the Tigers by Tony Madlock. He's the senior at 184 pounds from right here in Memphis. Got it up for the first time in the ball game. Bearcats turning the ball over. Well, it actually wasn't a turnover. It was a jump ball situation, but uh, every possession is going to be important for these two teams today. There's Nelson with it. Working the perimeter, now inside, left hand. Ooh, nice shot by Van Exel. Nicky Van Exel just out quick the defense in terms of getting up to the hoop. Smith draws the foul as he goes to the hoop, and it'll be a good one. So Corey picks up the first foul of the Bearcats. 
Take a look, if you will, at Smith. Billy Smith taking the ball to the basket with a lot of aggression, trying to get inside and take advantage of Cincinnati before they get back and set their defense. So it's not shooting. Here's Smith with the J. He got bumped. No call. And you see with the basketball. Blood down the middle. And oh, yes. Bearcats in their transition game. Shot was missed. Almost looked like a foul could have been called. Yeah, the rim is stuck down on Corey Blunt's dunk shot. Look at this. Probably, probably need to pull it down again to take it back up. With authority. Uh, <laughs> he has really come on, hasn't he? Oh, Corey's doing a great job. He's doing a lot better job. But if he continues to be aggressive in terms of going to the basket, it will allow him, I think, to be able to get inside, get to the foul line, and be able to do some very good things to help this basketball team. He broke the rim. Well, I don't think it's broken. It's a spring. And if you hang on it to take it back up, it should go back up. Well, I think we're going to get a couple of cheerleaders down there to see if they can do it. This is with authority, my friends. I think they tried taking it down for us. Yeah. No, no, no. It doesn't really work that way. Yeah. We'll be here all night if that happens. The strength of the Cincinnati Bearcats all season long has been their ability to play defense, and watch this. Jeff Scott does just a great job with positioning his body, but Jeff does not have to score in order for him to be an asset to Bob Huggins' basketball team. Good defensive position, rebounding, blocking shots, intimidating inside, and even scoring on occasion is what Bob Huggins looks for in Jeff inside. Jeff Scott, 6'10", senior out of Cincinnati. Memphis State basketball. That's Ernest Smith with it. Neither team shooting the ball very well. Cincinnati about 38%. Memphis State only about 33% right now. Douglas from the foul line. Gibson comes down with the rebound. He's averaging about four a game. And his direction is good play. Gibson loses it there, but guess who picks it up? It's Jones. Missed it. Scott with the rebound. Back up to the right hand though. Douglas comes out of there with Cincinnati looking for contact, and there really is not a lot. You need to continue on up with your shot and not worry about the shot blocker. Ooh, Buford got up on that particular move. Nelson top of the get five already. Buford with it against Smith. Cincinnati in their motion offense, just trying to get the ball to the cutter or to the open man for a jump shot. 22 on the shot clock. Jones against Hardaway. Plenty of time. Oh, yeah. Half-court offense. That's what the Tigers want to see the Bearcats do. Now 10 on the shot clock. Buford's open. In and out. Rebound inside. Jones with the sky left side. <laughs> Herb Jones is having some success. That's his second basket with his left hand inside. But by getting inside is his biggest asset where he can really help this basketball team. Now, now he's bad luck. He's set up. He's a senior in grand school here at Memphis State. Douglas. Nelson's not going to come out of it. At the three-point. Memphis State has had a history of going through walls comes to their offense, standing around with the ball over their head, waiting for things to happen. Oh, almost a steal by Buford, and he lost it, going for it out of bounds. It'll be Eric Martin now checking in for Cincinnati. Bob Huggins liked the effort, though, from Buford. Anthony Buford will give you all that he's got when it comes to going after that basketball. Not only does it tip it away from Ernest Smith, but trying to keep the ball in play by just diving for the ball. 9.39 left first half. Here's Hardaway for three. He wants a big one that time. Rebound to the Bearcats. Gibson two on two. Doesn't have the numbers to bring it back. Touched by Memphis State. The Bearcats are certainly being patient. They lead 17 to 8 here. 918 to play. Bearcats have attempted six of them against that new rim. Haven't hit one yet. Inside is where the Bearcats need to get the basketball. Give it go. And on the right side, count it. 
goaltending as Johns goes up. I'll tell you what, there was a nice underneath the shoulder pass by Eric Martin. Take a look at that pass right over the shoulder inside to Herb Jones going to the basket. Nice way to get that give and go inside. Kelvin Allen making the block, but it was called a goaltend. Good call. 19-8 Cincinnati by 11. Padlock setting up the high 1-4. By the way, averages 15 shots a game. You would expect him to get the ball. Well, he's more of a second half type player, and you know, he's going to try to look for a shot early. If it's not there, indeed he is going to the second half, come out and put the ball up. And he has the light to do it from coming out of the locker room. There he goes down the lane and he scores. Such a gifted athlete to be able to penetrate inside. Use his athletic ability to knife away from the contact and still make that pass. Six, seven, sophomore from right here in Memphis. Twice he won player of the year in high school. Nobody else has done that in the state of Tennessee. Eddie Hardaway missed his first season because of being a Proposition 48, which is academic difficulty in meeting the requirement. But also, he got shot in the foot being in the wrong place at the wrong time. That was a nice give and go from Herb Jones back, this time to Eric Martin. Inside Allen, and nobody covered underneath. And that Calvin Allen has his first basket. 21-12 now, Cincinnati. Newford left alone inside. Oh, there's a jam. Nice feed, and Scott gets it, and a steal by Gibson. Bearcats applying plenty of pressure. Buford inside, missed it. Jones with the rebound, and he'll keep it alive for UC. Martin to the glass, and it's tipped up by Scott twice, missed it, and finally the Tigers come away with it. Tell you what, you have to like the way Cincinnati's going after the ball on the boards. Allen missed that one, but Martin's there for the rebound, and throws it away. That got Bob Huggins dander up. Ooh. A.D. Jackson will be coming in for him, but we'll take a timeout. 7.03 to play first half, and UC leads it in Memphis. Seven minutes and three seconds left of the first half, and the Bearcats lead it. You're inside the UC huddle with Bob Huggins diagramming the plays and telling his Bearcats to get on the boards. Take care of the basketball. They just turned the ball over in the situation sequence right before the timeout, but Bob Huggins wants his team to go after the ball aggressively on both boards, which is what they've done. However, when you get possession of the basketball, take care of it and try to get a better shot on the team. Herb Jones, three for five from the field right now with six points, two rebounds, two assists. Penny Hardaway, only six points, no rebounds, and no assists. Memphis State with the ball. They're in the white with the blue numbers on the back of their uniforms. Their cats in the rose black with the red numbers. Smith with it. Go inside the bond for the turnaround. Off with it is Nelson. He got it knocked out of his hands, but he touched it last. Actually knocked out by his teammate, Eric Martin. But again, they were both going after the ball aggressively, so a coach never complains about that. Got Martin and Nelson in the ball game at the same time. Kind of unusual because you don't have a true scorer in either one of those players, but Herb Jones is on the floor. Who will give you some points? Turn around by Allen inside. It's four for Calvin Allen. It's 23-14, Cincinnati. Pressure in the backcourt is A.D. Jackson brings it up. He's in there for Nick Van Exel at this point. Cincinnati again, going to go to their motion office, trying to get the ball inside if they can. Baseline to go. Nelson.
Nelson has it. And now Martin trying to find some room in the score. Good job by Eric Martin to continue to use his body. Had a chance to go up with a dunk shot. Had he done that, next time the defense would have gotten out of the way. But he did use his athletic ability to get inside. Woo! Hanging in the air that time. The elevator man, Billy <laughs> Smith, using his athletic ability to go inside over the defense. It's his first two points. Billy Smith's such a great defender on basketball. Does a good job of following his man. One of three players from East High School as Jones takes it in with again the left hand. Well, Herb is around the basket, and most people are aware that he likes to use his right hand, but Herb does very well with his left hand when it comes to going to the basket. Bad pass by Vaughn. Jones with the left hand again. And a carom ball. Almost a steal as it came across the court. Here's Smith for three. Inside rebound, and it's touched out of bounds. Last by UC. The Temple of Doom fans really not happy at all. And now there's Bob Huggins as Herb Jones limps off. He might have got stepped on and the bodies down low. Yeah, that does happen when you get that kind of contact. So far, Cincinnati has scored eight points off of Memphis State, seven turnovers, and Memphis State has only forced four turnovers by the Bearcats. Only scored four points. Aaron Skipson comes out. And Jeff Scott back in the ball game. Exactly what Bob Huggins wants, and that's being aggressive on defense. Hardaway gets up high on that one, but didn't get it to go down. He was only he didn't have all that many points, 16 points, but he didn't connect that well from the field at the Shoemaker Center earlier this year. That's already had four. Six steals. Memphis State only has one to this point in the game. Memphis State back in a 2 3 zone. AD Jackson waiting for his teammates to set up the offense. Plenty of time, 18 on the shot clock. Now here we go. Martin with it on the right side, double team. Nelson. He kind of knocked out of his hands, but Martin comes up with it. He's going to go to the line. Fouled in the process, coming down the lane. Eric Martin was actually looking to pass that basketball. I don't know if they're going to put him on the free throw line or not. Going to give him two shots. He was looking to pass the ball to Jeff Scott. He sure was. And for Ray Hardaway. Take a look at Terry Nelson going in for the shot. It's tipped away, which is a good block by David Vaughn. But Eric Martin is looking to pass that. That's an ugly shot, but <laughs> indeed it was a pass off. Contribution to the last six games. I keep waiting for this young man. One day, lights gonna come on. He's gonna realize he is just an outstanding athletic talent for the University of Cincinnati. More and more comfortable in the Queen City, and he has six points already this evening. 29-16, and a bad pass created by the Bearcat pressure defense. Another turnover. Cincinnati has a chance. That's eight turnovers now by Memphis State. Coming down to the four-minute mark here in the first half. Pressure now by Memphis State. As Anthony Buchan sets up the offense, trying to get it across the line. Anthony Jackson, his running mate, along with Terry Nelson and Jeff Scott and Eric Martin out there on the floor. Martin, bad pass and whistle and a foul on Martin. Eric Martin tried to steal the basketball and got the reach in foul. Well, what Eric Martin did was fail to catch the basketball and have it in his possession before he made a move with it. Timeout on the floor, and we're going to take timeout with the Bearcats in the lead in Memphis. Three minutes and 47 seconds left to go here in this first half. Let's take a look at the four game summary. And it's the no action <laughs> right at the top. The delay for 52 minutes because of the broken rim.
you see is doing it with the defense. My goodness, with the steals and also on the defensive end with turnovers. Well, indeed, they have. They've forced eight turnovers right now, but they're also applying a lot of pressure on Memphis State, making them pick up the basketball away from where they want to pick it up. And Memphis State's standing around. They're being a little stagnant right now, so they need to force the action. The Bearcats want to continue to force the action. Jones has eight, Nelson eight, Van Axel six, and Martin six for the Bearcats. And Murray Hardaway has six points for the Tigers. First time we've seen Tim Duncan in the lineup for Coach Larry Finch. Also in the lineup, Marcus Nova. Hardaway still there. He goes baseline with it. Cashes it in. Anthony Hardaway can do so many things. And, you know, we're going to be repetitious talking about this young man, not only tonight, but also the next couple of years because of what he can do for this Bearcat basketball team. Jones with the right hand, and he almost got it to go in. Maybe Herb should have used his left. He's been very successful with that tonight. But a nice attempt to get in and try to shoot that basketball. Nice bounce pass underneath for A.D. Jackson. Herb is not able to convert going underneath the hoop. But he does draw the foul. Foul on Tim Duncan, his first. 17 foul now. Charged against Memphis State. What Cincinnati is shooting free throws very, very well so far in this basketball game. Jones will get the second of the two free throws. And he gets it. He has 10 points already at 20 in the first meeting between these two. Marcus Nolan takes, takes it to the left block. Bearcats and a man. Van Exel on Nolan. Set up Hardaway. Go to the left side. There he is. Hardaway for three. With a defender in his face, Penny Hardaway goes up right over Herb Jones, able to make that basket. First, Tigers charge back up. First three pointer of the game for Hardaway. Here's Jeff Scott in and out. Out of bounds and last touch by the Tigers, and it'll be UC basketball. Hey, what, Bearcats were very fortunate, but also you have to like what Jeff Scott did in going after that basketball. He almost could have gotten called for an over-the-back foul, but he stayed with it long enough and well enough to keep the ball in Cincinnati's possession. It's Nelson with it. No foul. <laughs> no physical blood, I guess. Physical game, no blood. That's it's, right. it's going to be a very physical game. I don't know if anything could be as physical as that game last week. Well, we still have another half to go here. And I think after even after the 52-minute delay, players are starting to warm up out here. Bad pass by Scott. Crowd's back in it. But that's a bad pass by the Tigers. 2.13 to go. Madlock back in. And uh, Marcus Nolan will be popping out of there. No, they're going to give uh, Smith a rest. Both of these coaches are giving instructions to their players in terms of taking care of the basketball. Every possession is going to be important, not only for the re remainder of this half, but for the remainder of the game. Half-court trap, and Axel will bring it across the line. No trap. No no, I trap. thought it looked like it was yeah. going to be set up that way. It did. Only if they get the ball on the sideline will Memphis State traps. They've, they've gone to this situation a couple of times already. Jones with the bounce pass. They reverse the basketball. There's Buford. He hasn't hit one yet. Here's Jones with the rebound. Tipped up by Martin. No good. And out of bounds. It will be Memphis basketball. It has gotten very physical under that basket. Cincinnati had two or three attempts at going after that basketball. No foul was called. But it was good intuition to stay after that ball on the hope. Well, it's above the rim, too. Yes, it is. Nolan breaking the pressure. Vaughn baseline. And they'll tie it up, and Van Exel's quick hands make that play. Cincinnati gets the basketball in alternating possessions. Minute 38 to play, first half. Bearcats by 10, 31 21. And look at the boards. Bearcats by 7 on the offense and defensive boards. Nelson cross court to Martin. Now the zone defense. Maybe a matchup this time down to the Tigers. It's like a 1 2 2. Neither team has scored in the last couple of possessions. 
Jones can't hit the long one. Bearcats are cold from three-point range, and Vaughn walked with it. I'll tell you what, the, the Bearcats are doing it defensively subtly. I mean, they're not making the big steal, but they're making the steal. And then they cause a turnover on just a, a little reach in, thinking that the player is going to have to reverse his hands or, or maybe reverse the basketball, and by golly, the Bearcats get it back. That's the sixth turnover by David Vaughn alone, 10 by Memphis State in this first half. Cincinnati can break this pressure, and I think what they need to do is get the ball to the high post, the foul line area. Newford looks for the shot. Inside the go. Double teamed. Martin back up again, and he scores. He stayed right with him. That's a good job for Eric Martin to maintain his concentration. Follow that basketball up after it was tipped away the first time. Last minute of the first half. Watch Penny Hardaway. You gotta watch him from the time he walks in the building because he has the ability to shoot the ball from anywhere on the basketball floor. Douglas with it. 24 on the shot clock, 28 on the game clock. Which could lead Cincinnati on last chance opportunity to shoot the basketball. Maybe about seven seconds. Hardaway with a double team. Inside, Douglas. No, Duncan with it, with the rebound stick back. Ten seconds. Seven. Man, excellent. Three seconds. Out of bounds and the horn. I believe that will be it in the first half. That is it. A ten-point game at the half. The Bearcats come out and do it on the defensive end like they've done all season long. And they have a 10-point lead at the half. And Bob Huggins looking up at the clock, knowing full well he's got a half to go for a title. Co-champions in the great Midwest. I'll tell you what, it was a sloppy first half. And I give the attribute that to the 52-minute delay. Back with more in a moment. You see leading 33-23 at the half. We're at the Pyramid in Memphis, Tennessee. And it's been a terrific first 20 minutes here. Tim Bray along with Derek Dickey. Derek, it was a game so far that it's been defense. Defense for UC, defense for Memphis State. I'll tell you what, what Cincinnati has done has gotten their bench to contribute. Is something that you and I noticed early in the game that Memphis State does not have as deep a bench or as contributing a bench as Cincinnati does. And so far in the first half, Cincinnati has scored. Their bench has scored 10 points, gotten about eight rebounds, and forced about four turnovers. So they've done a good job in that respect for Bob Huggins with their defense. Let's take a look at the first half highlights and the highlight of the, the half so far, probably <laughs> the whole game, the slam dunk they brought the rim down by Corey Blunt and it took 52 minutes <laughs> to get that one done here's a great big rebound by Herb Jones Bearcats just crashing the great defense is Jeff Scott and doing some really good thing for Bob Huggins basketball team and Murray Hardaway his three-pointer in the first half and that was a big shot at that point Inside, in the paint, some nice passing. Jeff Scott with the slam from Anthony Buford. And this is penetration all the way. This will drive coaches absolutely crazy when you have you have great defense for 14 seconds, and then all of a sudden, the last second, you allow a defender to go right down the middle. But Penny Hardaway can do just about everything out on the basketball court. Now the first half statistics and neither team shooting very well. No, but it's, it's good defense by both these teams and also that 52 minute delay has really caused a lot of problems for both of these teams. Bearcats leading in rebounding. Herb Jones, the leading scorer for UC with 10 points. Look at Eric Martin with eight and Nick Van Exel with six. Now for the Tigers, and Curry Hardaway with 11 points in the first half. And uh, Madlock and Allen also scoring. So those are your halftime statistics. The second half of this basketball game upcoming from the pyramid in just minutes. Much pressure as they can on Memphis State. Not let them get wide open jump shots or wide open uncontested shots. Well, there's Douglas to get things started. His first two points of the ball game. Memphis State going to try to apply three-quarter court or four-court pressure, just being in the way of nothing else, making Cincinnati either pick up their dribble or now force them into a situation where they have to do something with the basketball. And Exel with it on the side. There's Buford. Smith on him. And the man for the Memphis State Tigers. And 
Next one trying to penetrate. Nelson will take the jumper, too strong. And he'll get his own rebound, what presence? But he throws it away, Douglas. Madlock will take the jet. Jones comes up with a rebound for UC. Very fortunate opportunity for Cincinnati at Memphis State made the first two baskets of this half. It could have been a different complexion coming out. Neither team shooting the basketball very well at all, but that might have to do with the defense. Jones inside. One had it knocked away. And he throws it away. Here's Hardaway. No look pass. And he is right up in the middle as he goes down the lane. Foul call. That's two very poor decisions by Cincinnati in the offensive sequence. Corey Blunt had the ball, makes a pass right to a Memphis State defender. And prior to that, Eric Martin made a pass right to a Memphis State defender. Terry Nelson picks up the personal foul. Watch him bottle up Hardaway in the middle. Tell you what, that was a good foul because he did not allow Penny Hardaway to get his arms above his waist. Therefore, he was not able to attempt the shot. I'm trying to find it. Hardaway lets it go right through his hands. Boy, what a shaky start out of the gate here in the second half for Penny Hardaway. For both of these teams, well, yeah, you can see they had some unforced errors. Ooh. We talk about that in tennis. We don't talk about that too much in basketball. Unforced errors are a bad <laughs> tennis term. You're, you're absolutely right. But you still, you still have to take care of that basketball. Every possession is important. The execution. There's Nelson moving on the right way. Now, Van Axel. Penetration. Scoop left hand is good. Getting the ball inside the painted area is what can allow the English of Cincinnati to get into and contain the uh, Memphis State Tigers. Blocking foul as Hardaway penetrated. It's on Buford. For Cincinnati with foul number two, second team foul. Look at uh, Penny Hardaway making that familiar hop skip step that he likes to go between defenders with. Well, Anthony Buford has ignited a lot of runs for Cincinnati this year. He's second personal foul in the game. And it'll be Memphis State basketball out of bounds. Floor is a little wet. I think they'll polish it a bit and we'll be ready to go. This is a common occurrence tonight. A delay. Take it down low and Vaughn with it. And Nelson lost it. Smith with the rebound, and it's good. Early Smith's fourth point of the game. As we talked about, every possession is important, and it's important for Terry Nelson, who has an opportunity to get that rebound, let it slip away. You've got to go after that basketball with two hands every time. Jones double team. Scott, now to Nelson, there's Buford with it. Buford looking to penetrate. Good defense by Memphis State, forcing Cincinnati out away from the basket. Inside Scott, and he will go to the free throw line as he draws a foul from Vaughn. Cincinnati, once again, trying to penetrate. Nick Van Axel sees a cutting Jeff Scott. His arm is actually grabbed that time. Looked like it might have been David Vaughn. Is that underneath, or was that Billy Smith? Grabbing the arm, allowing Jeff Scott to go to the line for the free throw. Jeff is absolutely struggling from the free throw line. First one, no good. 32% from the free throw line is not going to win you a whole lot of basketball games. No, in his career, he's a 50% free throw shooter. 7 8 from the line so far tonight. That was the Cats' first miss, but Buford gets the rebound. Nelson mistimed his jump, but Scott gets it, and he can't get it to go down. Nelson gets it again, and he will go to the free throw line as he is fouled. Four chances at the hoop, and Nelson will go to the line. You have to absolutely love this exchange by UC going after the basketball. Here comes one shot by Herb Jones. No foul is called. Terry Nelson over the back. He could have been called for a foul. Jeff Scott goes up with the left hand, nothing. But Cincinnati stays after the ball, stays after it until somebody either gets to the foul line or we carry someone out of here. That's <laughs> for sure. So now it is Terry Nelson at the line. And he'll get the first one and he'll get one more. Six for Nelson now in the ball game. 
is doing a lot better job of concentrating and making their free throws. You know, when you're on the road, every possession, every point is absolutely important. So now it's 37-27. Cincinnati by 10. They led it by 10 at the half. Pressure there. This is Duncan. Forced it and he got it. I'll tell you what, Tim Duncan, another player out of Memphis, Tennessee, was able to turn and find the basket without even looking at the hoop with three defenders around him. It was the strength of the bench at Tulane that won Memphis State the basketball game because they got in all kinds of foul trouble on Wednesday night in New Orleans. Now he's looking to get the ball down low. Another bad pass. Steal, and now it's back the other way. Cincinnati has the numbers. Buford, and finally his first two. What, now he's shooting on the rim that he's familiar with. The first half was a rim they shot on for the last two days, and it's been changed, so now he's back to a more familiar surrounding. Almost a steal. Jones has got it. One hustle, and it's stolen away by Hardaway. Two of the best in the league going at it one-on-one. -on -one. Duncan takes it down, and Douglas inside, and he scores. Anthony Douglas using every bit of that 255-pound frame Clear out in the point underneath just got and lay the ball in the hoop. Bearcats with the lead in the ball with 15.45 to go in the ball game. Buford taking it inside, will put it up and score. He scored four in a row for the Bearcats. Did you see where Anthony Buford's getting the shot inside the painted area? The first half he was shooting from the outside. Now he's back inside getting something that is a lot more familiar to him. 15-27 to play here in the second half. And the Bearcats lead by 10, and Memphis will be back. Anthony Buford has scored the last four for Cincinnati. They lead by 10, and this is a nice running right-hander. Indeed it is, but Anthony is now getting inside, getting to a more familiar territory for himself and making shot attempts at the hoop. Anthony Buford has done it in the past. He has ignited runs like against Marquette. He had six points in a row. He sparked a 16-2 run there. He's done it. That's just one example. What Cincinnati's also shooting the ball very, very well from the free throw line. They're 9 of 11. Memphis State is still yet to attempt a shot from the free throw line. Now we're going for the first time. Anthony Douglas. And Corey Blunt. Commits the personal foul. That is foul number two on one. And it'll be Memphis State at the line. Larry Finch trying to charge his team up. Buford brought the house down with a slam dunk and also brought the rim down in the first half. This is Memphis State's first attempt at the foul line all night tonight. And Anthony Douglas shooting about 67% from the free throw line. Let's see what kind of luck he has. Douglas has hit 11 of his last 13, make it last 14 now. Well, I'm not going to make a major issue out of this anymore, Tim, but you know, they're shooting on a rim now that they're really not as familiar with, so it, it may have a little bit to do with how the ball caroms off that basket. That one went in. So give Douglas five, and it's 41 to 32 as Bearcats see pressure and a bad pass. So many times we hear that a team that applies pressure does not like pressure applied to them. Bearcats are not making good decisions in a situation like that where they should be a little more patient and recognize first and then try to establish and attack the situation. And the man for UC. Duncan inside. There's Billy Smith with a long bomb and it's no good. Buford with a rebound. Cincinnati has a chance if they can get the ball to court. Nope. Van Axel with a six foot eight is Anthony Hardaway guarding him. Hardaway's trying to utilize his size to intimidate as Van Axel brought him. There's Blunt off the iron. Hardaway with a strong rebound. That's Madlock now. Almost lost the handle on it. Douglas gets a screen. Right hander is good. And here's a run by Memphis State. That's a nice shot by Anthony Douglas to use his body, lean inside to make that shot attempt. And you see, is forced to call a timeout. So we played six minutes here of this second half, and the Bearcats lead it, 41-34.
Tigers have scored five of the last eight points and sometimes it, you got to create and this is what happens on this play. Well indeed it does Memphis State just trying to get the ball inside the painted area so they can get a little bit closer shot attempt and what they did that time Anthony Douglas in filling the lane also feeling that starting spot left vacant by Todd Munt is now able to cash in on an easy hoop. That's a name from the past Todd Munt. I remember he gave the Bearcats fits for about two years. He sure did. He's not playing now. No he is very little and that's because Anthony Douglas is being a lot more active on the offensive end and the defensive end for Larry Fitch's basketball. And Exel trying to get across and it is knocked away. Hardaway stole it. He created it. And now he's at the other end. Big board by Buford. You cannot turn your back when Anthony Hardaway is on that basketball floor. Great pass, but Hardaway pinned it against the glass. Yes, that should, bucket ought to count. Should be good. Hardaway no, is going no. to get a foul, but no. Oh, that, that is, is gold tip. No, it's not. No, it's not. All right, no, okay. Not. Because the ball did not touch the backboard. Anthony Anthony actually pinned it against the board, and it was still on its way up. That is a good call. Very close, but it, it was indeed a good call. Bob Huggins arguing his point. Take a look at this again. The ball is on its way up, but Hardaway is the one that initiates it against the board. Well, that is a split second, but great eyes by the official. We have the luxury of seeing it a couple of times. Hardaway's second personal foul. Jeff Scott at the line, and he is 0 for 3 now. Jeff is now starting to release the ball with a little more rhythm and a little more control on the ball. If he continues to follow through, he will make some of these free throws. But Cincinnati has the edge on the rebounding boards. They got 28 rebounds, Memphis State only 18. Rebound, Bearcats, but it is knocked away and last touch by you, see. So Jeff Scott did not hit the rim, or if he yes, did, he it was did. barely. Yes, he did. If he had not hit the rim, it would have been a violation. That is true. Of the state. He just barely hit the rim because he came straight down into Terry Nelson's hands. Now he's still applying pressure out front, trying to force a turnover of sort. Douglas gets another shot. Ball on the floor is picked off by Memphis State again. Looked like Cincinnati tried to run out of there without the basketball that time. Their defenders were pinned up. Their best rebounders were pinned underneath the hoop. This is the time Memphis State is attempting to make a run. They trail by seven. Four shot by Smith. Duncan with the rebound and a whistle underneath. And Larry Finch has to be restrained by his coaching staff because I'll tell you what, there was more of a foul in the initial shot. I think there was, no question about it. I would agree with Larry on that exchange. And three Hardaway trying to settle his coach down. Take a look, if you will, at this. Oh, <laughs> looked like Anthony Buford might have actually grabbed the right arm of Billy Smith in that shot attempt. And that's what Larry Finch was so upset about. Tim Duncan will go to the free throw line. His third time at the line this year. He's getting plenty of minutes right now. Corey Blunt back in the ball game for Cincinnati. Across in your picture as Jeff Scott comes out. Cincinnati's not scored in a few minutes here, so uh, this next possession is going to be very, very important. And I'm sure Memphis State, if, it, if this free throw is converted, is going to apply defense. Hardaway gets the offensive board. The uh, big possession for the Tigers. They've already scored a point. Potential for, I suppose, three or four more. And the state knows who to go to. Get the ball in the hands of the money man. The penny. There's Madlock at the free throw line. He's had some big shots over his career, and now he has six. And it's 41 37 now. That's experienced by Tony Matlock. Nick Van Exel breaking the pressure, and now the crowd comes into it here in Memphis. All 22,000 at the pyramid. Van Exel for three. No good. Billy Smith with the board. 
What Cincinnati and Bob Huggins wanted to do was try to limit and minimize the crowd as much as they can. And by getting that early lead, they've been able to do that. Adlock one-on-one. Terrible shot. Nope, it was deflected. Nelson with it. Cincinnati breaking the pressure, but the ball is knocked away by Duncan. Here's Hardaway. Doesn't have the numbers, but he'll take it in anyway, and Buford stops him with a foul. It's on the floor, so there will not be shots attempted. But Anthony Buford, as you can see, is unhappy. This is a nice move by Hardaway, but are they going to get him give him free throws? I hope not. I don't think so. It looks like the foul was on the floor. Anthony Buford will check out of the ball game for Cincinnati with 11.30 to play in the game. Has Buford scored? Buford has scored four. Okay. Just this half. Yes. As a matter of fact, he scored the last four points for Cincinnati. Smith's three, no good. Knocked away. Last touch inside by Hunterman. So the Bearcats will see pressure. Now, a lot of dead balls, and that has created a lot of opportunities for pressure in this basketball game. Both sides. Cincinnati needs a basket here in the worst way, or at least get to the free throw line. One. Nelson down low, there's Gibson, finally. Outside shots are not going to be, you know, very effective for a team like Cincinnati that's struggling right now in this basketball game, but getting it down low will be able to help you. Duncan, blocked by Blunt out of bounds, and last touch by the Bearcats. Awfully strong, Corey Blunt inside. Indeed it was, not only did he block the ball, but Kept the ball in play long enough for his team to at least be able to get an attempt at keeping it inbounds. Six point game. Tigers trail. Hardaway. The block, double teamed. Was travel. And Smith for three. Off the iron, and now the Bearcats on the run. Two on one. All the way, man. Excel, and he'll go to the line, count the bucket. Good job by Nick Van Axel to start that break all on his own by getting the rebound and getting a shoulder in front of the defense. Look at him being chased by Anthony Douglas, and he just goes out and takes off right over Billy Smith, who does get that blocking foul. Second time in the game he's gone coast to coast. It certainly is, and he's done it. And Larry Smith was absolutely in enraged because his team did not get back and cover that hoop. Billy Smith checks out of the ball game and in for the second time, and the first time in this half is Marcus Nolan. You know, what has been important is Memphis State made a couple of runs. They made a couple of baskets to go from 31 up to 37 points, and now Cincinnati gone from 41 up to 46 points, so they're making a run to answer Memphis State's run. Oh, a nice feed in to Hardaway. A spin move by Nolan. Ernest Allen down on the paint. It was on Nicky Van Exel. It was to come back. trying to help out, and that's important. 16 fouls on Cincinnati. And it looks like uh, Nicky Van Exel with his first foul. Right. Take a look at Memphis State breaking the pressure. Nice move by Marcus Nolan to take the spin and the dish inside for his teammate. Ball is pinned against the glass, and the tie-up situation that goes to Cincinnati on alternate possession. I was going to say that basket had something to do with that, but now nah, I better leave that alone. <laughs> that has been the phantom basket. There's the long pass down the floor to Hurst Jones, and they throw it away. Every once in a while, you've got to do that to keep the defense well, honest, but not particularly in that position. You, you do, and that was a good idea, except that I don't know if Terry Nelson ever played baseball, <laughs> because as a baseball player, you're taught to lob the ball, or as a football player, you're taught to lob the ball into the receiver room underneath it. The ball was not lobbed. It was thrown a direct pass. Marcus Nolan. That's his first points of the ball game, and just like the two-lane game, the bench is uh, contributing here tonight for Memphis State. Marcus Nolan, a freshman, also out of Memphis, Tennessee. Ten of the 14 players on the roster. <laughs> Turnovers are almost even now. Memphis State at 13, Cincinnati at 14. And Axel on the left foot. Trying to penetrate now, Gibson. Inside. 
side, backdoor cut, man, Exo. Good look. Memphis State is playing such aggressive defense. They're overplaying almost every situation. That time, Nick Van Exel chose to go inside and not go out where the defender was waiting. Time for a one and one as Van Exel commits the personal foul. First time we've been in a one and one situation. Didn't get to that in the first half. It's a second foul on Van Exel. Remember, they didn't even know it in the first half. Here are some of the factors in the Bearcats' success. The runs this year. Look at Marquette with Buford igniting the 18 run. There's different players. Tennessee, it was Anthony again and Van Exel at St. Louis. The same situation at the beginning of the game. Bearcats have had one just about every game. Yeah, but I like the leadership role in there. And Anthony Buford. Stepping up, doing what's necessary to get his team back on track. He's back out on the floor now. Let's see if he does use that experience and leadership to get a run started for Cincinnati. Terry Nelson checks out of the ball game for the Bearcats. Eric Martin back in. Marcus Nolan getting some PT tonight. And it is a seven point game. 48 41, and Nolan with four points. Nine and a half to go. Nelson will bring it up himself against Hardaway. Hardaway and he lost control of it. Buford though, off the block inside Martin on the block. Can't get it to go down and it is Memphis State's basketball. And it's Dallin no good. And you see with it. Cincinnati clearing with blood. Gibson on the break. Basketball is what Cincinnati needs to do with this. Every sequence, it's going to be very, very important from now until the end of the game. Just a little over eight and a half minutes to go. 2 3 zone by the Tigers now. It's more like a 1 2 2. And Axel. And Axel now with 16. First three of the game for the Bearcats. Yes. Finally hitting the basket from outside. And a steal. Beautiful. Up to Nicky B, over to Martin for the jam. Once again, Anthony Buford has initiated this defensive effort to put together hopefully another run for the UC Bearcats. They're back up to 12 points ahead right now. Memphis State calls timeout. 8.16 to go, Larry Finch not happy at all. Bearcats 53, Tigers 41. We'll come back to the pyramid of the moment. Senior leadership from Anthony Buford as the Bearcats go on an 8-4 run. He gets it up to Van Exel and watch this. Tell you why this is important is because the last time Nick Van Exel was out on a break like that, he tried to wait for the contact, the defender to come in before he released the ball and missed a shot. This time he had a fellow teammate following him in Eric Martin to be able to finish that playoff with a nice assist. Eight times this year that the Bearcats have made Quite a run at their opponents in the second half. This appears to be the night. Van Exel doing another fantastic job. 16 points and three assists. Also has a couple of rebounds in this basketball game. Eight minutes to go. The state control. I'll tell you what, Anthony Hardaway is on the bench right now. This is a chance for Cincinnati to continue this pretty good run they have going right now. Memphis State has played very tight basketball games here at the Pyramid as Madlock puts it down. Against Temple, it was nip and tuck all the way. That was their last loss here. Game televised by ESPN. 7.39 to go. Good patience that time by the Bearcats to be able to recognize, identify what was going on. Buford, top of the key. Martin on the way. Van Exel gets a nice pick, but can't use it. Now he tries to get it to Buford, and it's knocked away by Ernest Allen. Good hands by the quick Ernest Smith inside to be able to tip that ball away. Madlock. Now Nolan. Looks like they lost it. Now Hardy. No, he really does. They don't have a direction. And Nolan's shot is no good, but Van Exel will get. I believe two shots, yes, he was just inside the line. Van Exel with his third personal foul. So far, the Bearcats doing very well on the boards. 34 rebounds, 17 offensive. And 
they're doing it defensively too, creating 14 turnovers. And Tiffany Hardaway has not scored in the second half. And we're 13 minutes in. Nolan with the first point of uh, this two shot foul. He has five. Tim Nolan. Marcus Nolan. Oh, sorry. Marcus Nolan. I was looking at Tim Duncan. 6 <laughs> 2 freshman here from Memphis. Was shooting about 45% from the free throw line. He's got a nice stroke. Here's a few more attempts. Ball tied up. Oh no, they call foul on Martin for a hole. A reach in. Tough call because the official they called it called it from behind. The official in front of the play had a jump ball. Gary Nelson's going to pop back off the bench for Bob Huggins. Hardaway's back in there too. So we get about a three minute rest and it's a one on one. For Madlock and Jones will check back in as Martin is back on the bench. Buford coming out with what appears to be a bloody mouth. An elbow. And who said this game wasn't physical? <laughs> Indeed it can be. So Bob Huggins trying to bring a cold championship in the great Midwest to Cincinnati. <laughs> 12 in a row at the free throw line. And that is Madlock now, one and one, and hits the first. To talk about how physical this game has been, and being physical in a game really says a lot about the character of the basketball team, whether they're able to control and maintain possession inside the painted area. Wow, it's high for that one. Jones scored all his points in the first half. It's tied up. But A.D. Jackson comes out of there with it. Nolan's got in. Boy, the pressure on the defensive end. Tense by the mistake. Great job. Here's Nelson coming below to uh, Jones. And now back out to Nelson. Wow, runner with 10 on the shot clock. Ter Terrence Gibson now. Lost control. Memphis State with a big possession here. The State would like to get the ball inside if they can. I think they got to have Hardaway touch it. Here we go. Hardaway touches the basketball for the first time in the possession. Here's Madlock. No, and Nelson high for it for UC. Hardaway's not in shooting situation. No, he's he, out on the perimeter. Well, he can shoot the ball right. on the perimeter, but he's not looking for his shot. He's not being aggressive on the offensive end. Bearcats, motion offense. Jackson, they go low. Here's Jones, right hand, no good. And again, Allen with the rebound. No foul on Jones' his left hand shot. Bird failed to cash in on that. Left-handed shot attempt. Terrence Gibson with a big tap of that basketball, and UC comes away with it. Did you see how high he got in the air? Yes, certainly did. Just good defensive effort, once again, by t rat 53-45. Went through his hometown yesterday, driving from Tampa. Is that right? Went from Alabama. <laughs> nice move by Nelson. Got it partially blocked. He'll go to the line. Good attempt because the last couple of times Terry Nelson has had the ball in the low post with a big defender, Kelvin Allen, on him. He's given him a couple of head fakes. That time Terry tried to go straight up and drew the foul. So Anthony Douglas checks out of the ball game. Douglas out with just seven points all in this half. And Tim Duncan back in. So Terry Nelson goes to the free throw line. Good, he'll get another. He's shooting the ball very well from the free throw line tonight. And there's eight points for him. Vaughn back in. And Allen been out for a long time. David Vaughn looks like he's got cobwebs on his shorts over there. He's been out so long. <laughs> yeah, he was cobwebs on his shorts in the first half, too. Riding the pine for 52 minutes where they fixed the uh, rim. He didn't make good decisions. Buford with the basketball as the Bearcats come away with another offensive four. Early fire calculations, that's 15 tonight. Nelson, Jones on the right baseline. Black rounding down to the 459 line. Trying to be 
patient with the basketball. You don't want to get too conservative. Take an XO. Got it over Hardaway for three. That's a very big basket for UC and also Anthony Hawk for Nick Van Exel to be able to get inside. And a steal at the other end. Nope. And whoop, bad pass. Hardaway for three. Short and Vaughn there for the board. The stick pack by David Vaughn. That's his first points of the ball game, and David Vaughn averaging 12 a game. He's 12th in the league in scoring. Oh. They, Shut him down. Well, they have, and, and David did not make the best decisions against Cincinnati in the first game, and also here today. Nelson, now Vaughn looking inside. There's Jones. Turn around. He's good. Kissed it off the window. That's Herb a, Jones. That's a tough shot by Herbert, leaning into the defender. Bearcats, 59, Tigers, 47, three and a half to go. Long bomb by Hardaway, and it's Jones with a rebound. Or a block with a rebound. What this rim might be attributing to what's going on as far as Memphis Station's inability to put the ball through the hoop. The ball's not staying up on the rim like it might have had they not replaced it. Tim Duncan with the foul. Herb Jones needs just eight points to be the 13th Bearcat to score 500 in the game. He's got 12 in the ball game. He's eight points. So Hardaway looks like he's a good fit to that. Take a look. Take a look at Penny Hardaway's shot. Look how long this rebound comes off, and, and, and I am going to say it. it. I think it's because of the tightness of that rim there. Unfortunately for the Bearcats, it happened in the first half when they were scoring, trying to shoot on that particular rim, and now in the second half, it's Memphis State's turn, and the ball is not falling for them. Herb Jones with one more opportunity at the free throw line on the two-shot foul, and it is good. And so with 14 points, Herb Jones leading the Bearcats. They lead at 61-47. We'll return to Memphis in just a minute. Sixty-one forty-seven. Cincinnati as Bob Hawkins talks to the troops. Final three minutes and 24 seconds. Let's take a look at the four-game summary. Turnovers, Bearcats with one more, but it's that kind of game. But look at the points off the turnovers. The Bearcats with 22 and uh, Memphis State with 18. Well, I want to give Herb Jones a lot of credit. Not only has he scored 14 points and you know, two assists, 4-4 four, four from the free throw line, but he has limited Anthony Hardaway to just 11 points in the first half alone. Tremendous effort by Herb Jones. And Hardaway averaging 17.7 points a game. That's fourth best in the conference. And he is shut out here in the second half, and he's going towards the rim that the, is the new one. It was jammed, and they put a new rim up. Of course, if you joined us late, that delayed the first half of this ball game by 52 minutes. Well, I'll tell you what the Bearcats have shown me so far, and that is that they are ready to elevate themselves to the next level because not only are they playing great defense, but they are also... Should be a goaltending call. Oh, Vaughn goes to the line after he hits the bucket because there's going to be a foul. Pound inside. The reason I say this should have been a goaltending call, watch coming through the lane. Herb Jones is going to grab the net. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yep. Had the basket not gone in, they might have given him the hoop anyway. David Vaughn with just a second field goal on the ball. One shot. Good free throw shooter. 73% on the season. Still got a lot of time on the clock. Over three minutes, three minutes and eight seconds to be exact. Red Cats by 11. Lots of pressure by Memphis State. You're going to see double teams, all kinds of situations. Cincinnati has to continue to look to get to the basket because they're going to be overplayed. They're going to have people go underneath on them trying to create steals and force turnovers but if you go back door like that get inside you can either get to the foul line or you can get easy layups now the back door cut is going to be available that locked with the foul and now two shots coming to Anthony Duke. This is another thing that I like about what the Bearcats have done in terms of their 
of taking the next step. They passed him on free throws. They made their free throws tonight. As we talked about earlier, they're only shooting 64% from the field as a team on the year. And now tonight, they've made a tremendous amount of those free throws, only missing two. Well, remember, they had 48 attempts at the free throw line the first meeting. That's the most attempted since 1973. And Blunt with a big board there. He goes up for the jam, and he's fouled by Vaughn. But did you like the authority that Corey Blunt went back in there with? He went back in, not with the attempt to lay the ball up and have Vaughn, Vaughn block it, but he was going in trying to actually dunk that basketball. That's a nice job by Corey Blunt. Now he's going to get to the foul line, showing that he has indeed come to play. Vaughn with four fouls now. Corey Blunt at the free throw line. He has perfected the technique of blocking shots. He had one earlier in this game. He's had 10 in the last five games. Not shooting with any arc on the ball. Corey Blunt is shooting a straight line right now. Corey averaging 8.5 points a game for Bob Huggins. Just 56% junior college player of the year last year. There's some arc. And the ball is tapped out to spin. Ball in the middle Walker. of the paint. Oh, and Terry Nelson had a black jersey, but he could have had a white jersey. Two and a half to play, and there's a foul in the backcourt. Ernest Smith, a senior from right here at Memphis. will have the one and one with UC and Ernest Smith's first personal foul. This, this, this is going to be a very big test for Cincinnati once again. They, they're up by 12 points with 2 minutes and 34 seconds to go, and they're going to get fouled, so now they have to convert these free throws in order to seal the game and put it away. Nicky Van Axel with 19 points for the night so far. And make it 20, so Van Axel with another free throw here to tie his career high, you see. Tied it a couple of times, one for East Carolina. And now he's tied it again with 21 points. And so we'll get a change in the lineup as Russell Young checks in. He's a senior out of LaGrange, Arkansas. 6'5", 212 pounds. Ernest Smith checks out. So I believe all the seniors have played. I think so. Five seniors from Memphis State in their final home game. 2.26 to go. Tournament next week for UC. There's a long shot by Smith. It's really good. And the rebound to UC and now a break. Earl Jones is going to slow it down. Van Exel. Come down to the two-minute mark. UC leading by 14 here in Memphis. Utilizing the clock as best they can is what Cincinnati should be able to do right now. Make good passes, run the motion offense, and if they get a chance, attack the basket. Van Axel's had an outstanding second half, 15 points. It's Jones in the corner. Bird bringing it to the middle. Now 12 and will set the offense up in the 145 left on the clock here. Buford, only eight seconds. Five seconds on the clock. He's going to have to shoot it. Yes, he is. And Van Axel. Van Axel forces it and hit it. It's a three at the buzzer. Yes as he laughs all the way going back down the court. That's one of those circus shots you practice in horse. New career high. And a bomb by Hardaway as he answers his first points of the second half. He has 14. Coming down to the minute mark now. 14-point lead for UC. Taking care of the basketball is going to be important for Cincinnati because they're going to get fouled. Just like that, and Herb Jones will go to the line. And the foul goes against Russell Young, his first. Well, the Memphis State Tigers happen to play this kind of game at home all season long. They really have played as much better basketball. And look at the Bearcats. They've averaged their, their opponents, held them to 59-9. That's a great credit to the defensive effort as Jones puts the first one home. Absolutely. Herb Jones with. 14 points and Nikki Van Axel with 24 on the night. Herb's 15th point. Minute to go. 69-53. 
Hardaway will let it go again. Everybody else crashes the boards. Vaughn gets it rejected by Blunt or Jones, and he'll go. I'll tell you what, that ball went home in a hurry after that rejection, didn't it? <laughs> it sure my did. Goodness. Take a look at, if you will, at Corey Blunt. The shot's going up from the outside, and another long carom, but David Vaughn coming in. Corey Blunt meeting him at the top for that rebound, and the foul is given to Terry Nelson. Terry Nelson only with two fouls, and Vaughn will go to the free throw line. 52.7 seconds to play. And it's a three-point play. That's 69-56 now again. Pressure in the backboard. And Axel didn't have a lot of pressure that time. 38 seconds to go. DC winds it down. on the shot clock, there's Jones. The 22,000 or so, they're out of here. It's heading for the exits here at the pyramid. 19 on the game clock, 10 on the shot clock. There's a long bomb by Nelson. The rebound goes to Vaughn. And now, as the clock runs down, Memphis State will have the final possession. There's Young. Off to Hardaway, three seconds to go. As Hardaway drains the three, and that's the ball game. The University of Cincinnati has won at Memphis State. The final 69 to 59. The Bearcats take it home. Co-champions in the Great Midwest Conference with the ball as they head to the tournament next week. We'll be back with more in Memphis in a minute. Cincinnati coming away with a victory, 69-59 over the Memphis State Tigers here in Memphis tonight. Tonight's performance automotive performer of the game is Nick Van Exel. Wow, 24 points, three assists, eight of 12 from the field, and a block shot as well. In recognition of outstanding achievement, the Performance Automotive Network will make a donation to the University of Cincinnati General Scholarship Fund. Wow, I'll tell you what, Nick Van Exel had a great game tonight, and the chance of a lifetime to have a career high and take a championship back to Cincinnati. Well, indeed, it was a great team effort once again, Tim, with Cincinnati playing tremendous defense, holding their opponent under their 59 points, and also to be able to take care of the basketball. They did a great job of that. Nicky Van Exel led the way offensively, as well as distributing the ball to his teammates. First time in 26 years, a championship, and it comes back to Cincinnati. Be sure to watch the Great Midwest Tournament next week. Thursday and Friday with doubleheaders both nights beginning at 8 p.m. Our thanks to Mark Owens and Tom Hathaway, our sports information gurus, for their assistance tonight. Once again, our final score, Cincinnati 69, Memphis State 59. For Derek Dickey and Tom Kelly, I'm Tim Bray. So long from Memphis. <laughs>